Good evening, you're watching Left, Right and Center. I'm Nidhi Razdan. On the show tonight, our big focus, the mess in Delhi University. Thousands of students have been hit by the ugly spat between the UGC and DU. And now there's utter confusion about the resignation of Vice Chancellor Dinesh Singh. That has complicated matters further. Is this a political game that's being played out at the expense of students? Is India's higher education in a complete mess? Well, confusion reigns tonight over whether or not Delhi University Vice Chancellor Dinesh Singh has resigned as the standoff over the four year undergraduate program deepened. The VC is at the center of this entire row for pushing ahead with the course despite strong opposition from teachers, bodies, and students. Things have come to a head this week with the UGC doing a turnaround and ordering the university to revert to the three year degree program. Well, joining us tonight, my colleagues Neha Khanna uh, from the HRD Ministry and Bhairavi Singh, who joins us from Delhi University. Uh, uh, Bhairavi, I'll come to you first. Uh, firstly, there's so much confusion about uh, Dinesh Singh's status tonight. You were among the reporters today who got an SMS uh, from, the, uh, from his media coordinator saying that he had, in fact, resigned this afternoon. And after that, the whole picture seems to be blurred. Bhairavi. Absolutely, Nidhi. In the afternoon today, we got a message from Malay Nira, uh, the uh, Vice Chancellor's media official, and of course, also the co dean of the Delhi University, saying that the Vice Chancellor had resigned. Subsequently, of course, what we saw was celebrations across Delhi University from various student bodies and the teachers' union. However, in a few hours from then, we got to hear conflicting reports about whether he had resigned or not. All right, some problem there with Bhairavi's audio. Let me take that question to Neha Khanna, who's been at the Education Ministry all day. In fact, Neha, one of the reasons we're confused tonight is because the ministry uh, has not heard a word about uh, uh, Professor Dinesh Singh's resignation. That's right, Ankita. Uh, as you know, there were reports in the afternoon that Dinesh Singh had resigned. And then there was a flurry of meetings with many, including the pro-Vice Chancellor, going to the Vice Chancellor's residence and appealing to him uh, to not step down. And since then, there's been absolutely no word on whether Dinesh Singh did indeed put in his papers. The HRD ministry officials say they've not received his resignation so far. So really, what is the status? Uh, you know, that really seems to be a big mystery. But let me tell you this, Nidhi, that since the reports of his resignation came in, there have been several meetings right here at the HRD ministry. The UGC chairman spent several hours holding talks with the higher education secretary at the HRD ministry on the next course of action. Several college principals, uh, in fact, came to meet HRD Minister Smriti Irani because remember, colleges are in a state of limbo. They can't, uh, you know, kickstart their admission process because they have no clarity from the Delhi University on what they're expected to do. And officially, though, uh, Nidhi, the HRD Ministry maintains that it's not going to intervene in this matter, but, but that it will ensure that the students' interests are protected. Fact of the matter is, this issue has now got deeply politicized. There are many that question the stand of the UGC, accusing it of doing a U-turn and acting as a puppet in the hands of its political masters. There are many who point out that last year at this time, the UGC had written several letters to the Delhi University approving the FIUP. Today, the UGC says, well, the FIUP uh, violates the national policy on education. It does not have the assent of the visitor, that is the President of India, and is therefore illegal. So the question they ask is, if this program is indeed illegal, what was the UGC doing for the past one year? Why has it woken up only now? Also questions are being asked about the role of the political parties in all of this, Nidhi, because Today you had senior leader of the Congress, Manish Tiwari, saying we're also leaning towards a three-year program because it's more efficacious. Fact of the matter is this program was introduced during the Congress regime and there were no objections from the government either during Kapil Sibyl's time or during Pallam Raju's time. If anything, many say that... Uh, this program not only had these ministers' endorsement, but their blessings and patronage. Talking about the BJP, well, the HRT ministry can say that it's, uh, you know, not going to intervene in this matter, but right. is it a mere coincidence that the UGC has taken this stand within just uh, weeks of a change of regime at the centre? So there I is politicisation of this political question, and, and we're going to just that, come to... We're, we're going to just come to those important political questions in a moment with Bhairavi, uh, before you, I know you've got a lot of students with you uh, there on the OB tonight, but just before you go to them, is there any more clarity at all on the admission process? Now, that has in fact been stopped. There are many colleges who are not admitting students. It was supposed to have started today. So what are students who are waiting to uh, you know, apply for admission supposed to do? 
Well, Nidhi, till uh, till about 6 p.m., there were lots of students here who had come uh, in the hope of getting the first cut off here and asking media people uh, about what was happening. Should they leave? Should they take their tickets? Should they stay for a week? Absolutely uh, com confused, going from one college to the other in the hope of getting some forms, some directive from the principals. The principals' association in the morning told me that they had absolutely no information, silence from the VC's office, but they took an unprecedented decision yesterday to defer the admission process on their own, something that's never happened in the history of the university. Today they said that they're hoping that uh, in the next five or six days they can come up with the cutoff list. Now also uh, we do believe that the vi at the Vice Chancellor's home uh, there are teams that are huddling at the moment and of course uh, hoping that he doesn't resign. That information still in the zone of uh, confusion of course but we also know on record the UGC had, says that it were, had said that it was unfortunate that he had been eased out. So conflict, uh, conflicting information coming in on that but the fate of so many students hanging in the balance, that's the major uh, problem. Guidelines still have to come out if the program is reversed to the three-year program. What happens to those students who are already in the four-year program and have done one year? What is going to happen to them? There needs to be a directive on that also, whether it comes from the previous VC's office or the new vice chancellor. Who's going to be the next vice chancellor? There's a a core team of the vice chancellor that will have to resign with uh, uh, with the VC, VC. That's the president mostly. Uh, but whether let me go across to one of the students uh, who is in the four-year program. Tell us a little bit about the program. Were you happy with it? And if it gets scrapped, will you be happy or sad? Yeah, actually, I was not happy with the, with this FYUP wala program, and I really think that it should be scrapped. And if it if it going to be scrapped, we are the most happiest students of the Delhi University, not only Delhi University of across India, because we all know that the education which they are providing is of very poor quality. And secondly, some reasons which are really astonishing us are like that: ki why have we been forced for to give our exams on laptop? See, we very well know that in Delhi University, not every not every student is of from Delhi only or from yeah. high class area. So, so you're basically very very unhappy with the four year program yeah. and if it goes you will still be happy that if it's turned into the three year program yeah. i also have with me the state secretary of avvp what is the road ahead for the students who are already in the four year program and what happens if the three year program is reinstated See, uh, if the f three years program is reinstated, I think it will be in the betterment of the student community. And there are no problems associated with it because the books are already there, syllabus is already there. It was being it was being run in Delhi University till last year. So the FIUP has come in, in between. So I think students who are in first year now, they don't need not worry. Students who are in BTEC right now, they need not worry. They'll have a smooth transition from the four years program to the three years program. And the UGC has formed a uh, standing committee on that, where Dusu and Duta are also members of that standing can be a smooth transition back to the three-year uh, course, you're, that's what you're saying. Also very quickly, uh, uh, State Secretary of the Left, uh, there was also information coming in that the, uh, that the Vice Chancellor of course didn't have the assent of the President. Conflicting reports on that also when he introduced the program. What are you hearing uh, from various unions and uh, teachers associations? President of India last year when UPA was in the government did, I mean, completely uh, maintained a silence on this. His nominee in the AC and EC, Mr. Javed, he actually wrote an open letter, I mean, criticizing the way it was forced in the in the university, the way it was passed in the EC. But no cognizance was taken of that. Now today, we we think we we want that MHRD should talk to the president and get this ordinance annulled because at the end of the day, the maintenance of quality of the higher education, this is MHRD's responsibility. And I think it's one month already. Uh, the minister is in power. She should you know come out with a statement of intent. So there you have it, Nidhi, from the students. They all want the four-year program to be scrapped and they also want some sort of information coming either from the Vice Chancellor's office or the HRD ministry. Back to you. All right, Bhairavi and Neha, thanks very much for that. So utter chaos and confusion reigns today as far as Delhi University is concerned. Joining us on the program tonight, Dr. Hari Gautam, the former chairman of the UGC, is with us here in the studio. Also with us, Anil Jha, member of the Academic Council and associate professor at Delhi University. Rudhan Shusha Chakravarti, also member of DU's Academic Council, who teaches uh, English at Delhi University. Uh, joining us also tonight, Angelica Aribam, the National Secretary of the National Students' Union of India, the NSUI, which is the Congress's student wing. And we'll be joined shortly by Nalin Kohli, the BJP spokesperson. We also have one of these protesting students with us tonight, uh, Amit Kumar, who's been uh, pretty much spending the entire day carrying out protests. And Rajesh Upadhyay, the former treasurer of Duta, also joins us tonight on an OB. But let me ask uh, Mr. Jha first, 
sir you know look at the complete and utter mess the situation is in today and now you also have a situation today where the congress is saying and manish tiwari for instance says that well this is also about the autonomy of delhi university would you fundamentally agree with that that this this has now become about the ugc versus the university and this these have long term implications for the university's functioning <coughs> nithi just try to understand who is responsible for this mess the whole system was working for one year ugc mhrd everything consented everything was going fine students ha had been admitted 50 55000 plus students now suddenly just 2 3 days before the new admissions you rake up this issue and then whole lot of politics goes behind it two things are very very obvious one is assault on autonomy of delhi university and second is this 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 unwanted politics on 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 the quality of fyup let me tell you if you raise questions on legality of fyup or the quality of fyup this was discussed threadbare in academic council meeting on saturday and 126 members of delhi university teaching community were there and with a clear majority of 81 versus 10 dissent it was passed so try to understand there is politics there is unnecessary ruckus ideally whole situation could have been avoided let me tell you any system which is introduced you can always fine tune that but you can't talk about rolling it back after one year See, so are you saying that the ugc came under pressure from the new government because absolutely. it was in the new in this party's manifesto to to scrap the fyup see i would not say that who is doing what because i am not aware i am not I, i don't have any eye witness account as to who is playing what game but there is definitely on assault and assault on autonomy of delhi university which is protected under an act of parliament way back in 1922 this autonomy is sacrosanct nobody can violate that and ugc which was created much earth, later in 1956 under its own act under its own regulation of 2003 it can't violate it can't violate delhi university's autonomy Okay, This so Professor Jha, you are saying that the autonomy of Delhi University is sacrosanct. So, Professor right. Chakravarti, does that, however, mean that if the autonomy is sacrosanct, that you also ride roughshod and you know push a course down everyone's throats, which is what Dinesh Singh's move was seen to be? Look, you know, there's a lot of controversy over how the FYUP came into being and whether there was enough consultation, whether the interested parties, you know, whether there was some thought that was put into it. I'll get you to answer that. Do you believe that this is really about autonomy, or just you know, there are many institutions and how they function today, uh, which have to be looked at in a completely new way? Uh, two questions. First, the fact that it's you know the whole question of politics is not new. Last time when it was introduced, it was introduced in a precisely as a political act. The minister, the, the earlier ministry rode roughshod on students, teachers, even on the UGC, and precisely because of that, UGC was you know mum on the matter, right? So the. F You know, the fact that FIUP it's not a new controversy it has been the con the for a protesting year. protesting teachers and students have been on the streets for the last one more than one year yeah. right now the flashpoint has come precisely because first time in the history of delhi university in 92 years the admissions have been delayed you know now the the way this mess eventually emerged now it, this has become one of the you know mafasal provincial university the way those universities were completely massacred and they were destroyed precisely because of misgovernance the second point about autonomy autonomy is sacrosanct for any educational institution no two opinion on that but autonomy for whom it cannot be an autonomy to be enjoyed only by the vice chancellor and the admission and the administration to ride not rough shot sure, on teachers all. and students you know not to allow any consultation on matters to pass courses in the most disgraceful manner within 2 days to 5 days is a letter on record dated 5th march 2013 by the pro vice erstwhile dean of colleges who is now the pro vice chancellor to all the departments saying you have to prepare fyup courses within 2 weeks that is and the deadline was given was 20th of march 2013 that's on record then on every matter the way fyup came you know as if it was a, some sort of a baby of a particular lobby and that is the precise reason the whole shoddiness of so, the program so your visible. point is that from the time it was introduced it there, there were political motives to now whatever is happening has politics i mean politics is being played in, in this you entire know, mess absolutely. from beginning and, and, to end you know yes. the, the whole issue of on the issue of autonomy it's du surrenders its autonomy not once many times before 
and nobody raised a question nobody you know nobody asked this question why delhi university did not protest the administration did not raise a word against nac when it was it was introduced in the university okay. you know See, it was literally steamrolled in the university to, uh, on the of Rostar university no. violated but he makes a valid point because the conduct of the vice chancellor here has come under criticism it has come under Maybe question from many is, quarters that is where i have a question you see a vice chancellor doesn't work in isolation he has a team and there are statutory bodies academic council and executive council there are various departments which had its own courses committees and these courses committees they discussed they debated on the course content and then ultimately it came to a sub committee of academic council and then from the sub committee it came to academic council now as far as this this dict di dictatorial attitude of vice chancellor as my dear friend talks about let me tell you he is perhaps i have been here in delhi city for last 28 years he is perhaps the first vice chancellor who has been so much accessible to students and teaching community i'll just give you one, one example last 10 seconds antar dhoni there is a program called antar dhoni which is a window casing of colleges and in that program every year vice chancellor meets across thousands of students and teachers and that program itself is sufficient proof that he is not a dictator had he been a dictator he wouldn't have allowed this programs to take can place can you honestly say that Which when this course was introduced it was done in the most uh, democratic consultative absolutely process absolutely no that doubt is, that is the that is the basic premise that is uh, that has been refuted. this is the rumor that is they trying to is spread it, right is it not true that a meeting was called at 3 days notice to pass it by the it, academic it, council not at all not with 3 days notice and were you given a notice on the 21st of december on 21st of december yeah that's what yes. i'm saying so three Days before, three days See, notice. Is that day. enough? You're changing the entire course structure. and Try the structure of a curriculum after what, 30, 40 years? I understand what you want to ask, yeah. but let me tell you one thing. December 2012, since the house was taken, it was not passed. Course curriculum was not passed. Then next six months, another academic council meeting took place in May, and then after that in August. Remember, the final passing of the courses took place in August 2013, Nidhi. Do you Why? think any 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 university will go on hanging okay. talking But about I'll come, the course? I'll come to you, Professor Doctor. Just give me a moment. Let me get just one. Yeah. The yeah. thing is, if if the final things were passed in August 2013, the session had already started. That is because May May. July, uh, that know, is so because May. I think there's a factual error. There. No, that is because in May 2013, the Academic Council passed most of the courses. and for august 2013 for review any review But or let, let me just get dr courses. gautam and dr gautam as someone who has headed the ugc in the past today the role of the ugc has also come under intense scrutiny i mean here is the same ugc that didn't have a problem with this and didn't call this an illegal course last year and today when a new government is in place uh, it is being seen to has uh, have come under pressure uh, to to completely change its stand that is something that uh, someone like professor jha is saying right off All right. Let me take that question to Nalin Kohli of the BJP who joins us tonight. Uh, I don't. I don't think Dr. Gautam can hear us. Nalin, uh, mm -hmm. if you can weigh in on that, you know the criticism. The criticism, Nalin Kohli, is that the it, 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 you know this change, the sudden turnaround by the UGC has come because of uh, pressure uh, from the BJP government. Allegation. I've been hearing your debate. My apologies for some reason. I got a few minutes delayed, Nithi. However, I'd like to come back to the primary question. an argument is being made that autonomy is actually what is at stake here but since when can autonomy be a cause of breach of law so i mean just because we are autonomous can a university start acting on its own accord i think i'd like to put the facts here first the ugc comes much later into it all the things aside the vice chancellor of delhi university needs to answer the first question that uh, the amendment to the ordinances of delhi university dated the 26th of december 2012 which lists out all the programs mentions only two programs and i'm repeating two programs for a four year duration course for 40 seats each that's 80 seats and two programs however in reality what's carried out is the four year program for approximately 44 courses and these two courses were the btech bs innovation with mathematics and iit it which is on page 3 of the amendment of ordinances and the btech of humanities which is on page 49 nowhere in that entire document the four year program functions for any other course so therefore that's the first point 
The second point is this ordinance. You don't think that the UGC should have had a problem with this a but year ago? Why no, did the UGC on. have a problem with it on so, the eve of the admissions, admissions this year? No, Say it at on. that time. Say it a year ago. You, I'll give you a straight answer yeah, on that. Which is? If a wrong, if a wrong is suddenly comes to light, the question actually should be asked not of the UGC, but the first is all the Congress spokespersons and the former ministers of uh, uh, human resource development. Did they? Why did they ignore the concerns of the members of parliament? Did they not mislead parliament? And then why How have they not been active come to the light of the UGC? Well, I mean, Kohli, in terms of it, the, well, the course has been there. I mean, the sure. course has already started. Well, the course the UGC has been knew in, well, it was there. I'll write the UGC to gave that. its blessings. Well, so, no, I mean, you can that. understand why a direct link is made. Then okay. with, with the politics that's, that's play, being played two, out here. I've understood the question and the substance of it, Nidhi. Two parts to it. One is, this is not a course which has been running. This has been a constant controversy. I would have considered it a course if it had been running smoothly. It's been in the news through and through from the day. And you raised some questions a few minutes ago. In terms of the timeline, Japan took nine years to make this shift. And we somehow in this country, in the name of autonomy, decided to do it in less you. than six months. I agree with you. Cannot, you cannot so, I mean, completely we, change a your curriculum committed. in a matter the, of six uh, the, well, months. Well, here's my first question. Will, yeah. How will Delhi University now take care of students who are part of an unrecognized course and not valid course if this is not a fraud? And we are now arguing how about autonomy and delay. How was it unrecognized when the UGC gave its blessings? It was not. Angelica uh, from the NSUI is here. I mean, the point well, is... The, uh, just for was, the record, yeah. a, NSUI spoke about the great benefits of... Uh, FUI, UP, and off late, they've gone absolutely reverse. Okay, I'd like to Angelica. respond to that. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, um, uh, the UPA respects the autonomy of the Delhi University. So we were never in favor of it nor against it. When the uh, Delhi University implemented the FYUP program, we, we are open to change and reforms in the education system. So we had an open mind about it and we waited for a year. We went to colleges, we went to students and we took their feedbacks and surveys. And during the course of this one year, we have found out there are a lot of shortcomings in the FYUP program. So, uh, so now we have decided to go against the FYUP program and we want uh, the return of the three-year program. And uh, speaking about the autonomy of the, UGC, uh, of the uh, Delhi University, it's really sad that the UGC is becoming the puppet of the present government. Well, um, it's unfortunate really when you look at the BJP manifesto, when they know that the uh, Delhi University does not fall into their paradigm, they have promised in the manifesto well, that they will scrap the FIUP. The UGC probably kept quiet please, about Nidhi? it because the UPA government was in power earlier Absolutely. and this was something that no, the, the early UPA education government minister had wanted. Never, had never believed in subverting the autonomy of an uh, autonomous we body. We take your word for that. I mean, we know that how, how clearly how things are functioning. So then I, you can I, say that so now, the UGC now, is a political pawn for both the UPA and the NDA. So right now, may I respond to that? Nalin, one second, one second. Last year when this was, uh, you know, steamrolled in Delhi University, so many of us who had been protesting, we went from pillar to post to ministers to MPs of the Congress. We went to the erstwhile Chief Minister Srila Dekshit and we apprised her of the simmering discontent in the university on the matter and we told her that politically it would be a game changer for the Congress if because it was the year of the assembly elections and she very curtly dismissed uh, her us saying that you know don't teach me politics I know how to run politics so I indeed she has been taught the politics in the university after that after the FYUP was in introduced you know the, in, in the duty the teacher in the teachers election the congress lost by a record margin in the students election they were decimated in the assembly elections they have been a poor third and in the you know a, a recently held Lok Sabha okay. elections let, you know the okay, results okay, so politically second, second. I know everyone wants to this jump in. to be let, a game let me just try and get uh, dr gotham back with us the former yeah. cha chairman of the ugc dr gotham how do you look at then you know the role of the ugc in all of this and the accusation today is that the UGC is, has come under political pressure, whether it was from the previous regime or the new one. Sir? You see, the whole matter needs to be totally looked into. First, that this course has a lot of lacunies, and it is a course with lots of pitfalls. It has a course content with teachers which are not qualified to teach, its course content which concentrates on many, many other courses than the main courses. It has been badly architected. It probably plays with the life of the students. I totally deny the merit of any merit in the case of the four-year program. Now, how was it introduced and why, how, why did it get into? I believe it must have been a policy matter of the earlier government 
and the manipulation which went into it to see that it was passed through and UGC became a part of it because they then UGC probably listened to the earlier government than now. Now once the new government came in, the merit of the case has been examined. And so you're saying that the UGC came under pressure f with, with the earlier government but obviously. now it has suddenly realized the merits so, no, of the no, four year course? I don't quite understand that sir. No, what I'm saying is as the, as the course was introduced, it got through because everybody came together, not realizing how bad and how good it was. I personally believe it must have been a well-planned course for certain reasons I do not know. But this course eventually is a course which we don't need, which the country doesn't need. It is uh, virtually interfering with the basic education in certain important subjects. The cafeteria approach, in fact, what the, this whole four-year program is, should have been introduced into a different manner. But sir, is it the point that the UGC should have taken a consistent stand on it? I mean, if this course ha has all the faults that it, uh, uh, that it has, and many of those are very valid arguments, the UGC should have had a problem with it back then and said it's illegal, don't do it. You can't you have see, two stands. Yeah. And you know, you're, you're in a situation today where the course is there, there are students who are enrolled in, uh, 60,000 students who are enrolled in it, and now their futures are at stake. Isn't that highly and grossly unfair? No, no, it's no question of their future at stake. What is important is that the thing, anything gone wrong has to be corrected. Midway corrections have to be done. And that is the policy every government must follow. And this is the time it has been said okay. that it needs to be done. Okay, you're and saying a midway UGC, course correction the UGC, is necessary, even if no. it's midway. Uh, you know, sitting with you is Amit Kumar. He's one of the students who's been protesting all day today, in fact, against the withdrawal uh, of the four-year course. Amit, uh, you know, you know, Dr. you know, Dr. Gautam is saying that it was a mistake. And now we have to fix it. What do you say about it? Look, the thing here is to understand is that the protests were in a different way. If you want to scrap it, you want to do it, it's not a problem. But the part of B-Tech, it will be different. That's why 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 IP, बाकी इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेजेस को छोड़कर वो दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी में एक ब्रांड यूनिवर्सिटी की तरफ आए थे उसका बात ये भी है कि उन्होंने इस साल को भी उन्होंने कहीं और एडमिशन नहीं लिया और वो सीधा दिल्ली विश्वविद्यालय की तरफ कंटिन्यू करते रहे अब सवाल उन स्टूडेंट्स की तरफ नहीं उठा रहा कोई भी कि उन बच्चों का क्या होगा आप पहले से भी जो बाकी कोर्सेज है पॉलिटिकल साइंस हिंदी इंग्लिश लिटरेचर और तमाम मैथ्स केमिस्ट्री फिजिक्स आप उसको पढ़ाइए कोई दिक्कत नहीं है आप वो पहले भी तीन साल में ग्रेजुएशन देता था ऑनर्स की डिग्री मिलती थी अगर आप उसके फाउंडेशन कोर्सेज को हटा के अगर डी सी वन डी आप भी आप इंप्लीमेंट कर देंगे तो उसको आप डिग्री तीन साल में दे देंगे लेकिन सबसे बड़ा सवाल होगा बी स्टूडेंट्स का जो उसका बी में कंप्यूटर साइंसेज है इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स है फूड टेक्नोलॉजी है ये कहना है कि आपने अगर इन्होंने अगर एक डिसीजन लिया है इस तरह से कोर्स करेक्शन करना ठीक नहीं है यू आर सेइंग दैट सवाल ये है कि इसमें बीच का रास्ता निकालना होगा बीटेक के स्टूडेंट्स के लिए अगर आप उसको स्क्रैप कर देते बाकी कोर्सेज को बीटेक को अलग करिए आप पूरी की पूरी बात एफ वाई यूपी के कोर्सेज को सेंटल कर दें ठीक है लेकिन बीटेक को आप अलग करिए बीटेक अलग स्ट्रीम है उसे तीन साल में नहीं पढ़ा जा सकता